In this video, I'm gonna explain how to go about setting up Mouse Excel. This is my fourth Mouse Excel video. So far, I've gone over learning to play with Mouse Excel, why it's not bad for your aim, and what the settings do. If you're interested in any of these three, feel free to check out the cards popping up on top of your screen. Today, I'm gonna be explaining how to make it so that it works really well for you. Setting up Mouse Excel is really the hardest part of using it. Most people think it's actually learning how to use it while it's running like aim with it, but it's really just figuring out what settings work for you. It'll only make aiming easier afterwards. All Mouse Excel does is just let you focus on your strengths instead of your weaknesses. So if you're kind of slow at moving your arm, Mouse Excel can make it so you can make wide angle flicks with your wrist without losing precision. So when you're creating a Mouse Excel curve, you want to look at the flat sensitivity that you currently use, preferably whatever your main sense is in the game or scenario you're optimizing for. Why do you use it? Is it precise motion, fast flicks, tracking people that are wrapping around you, easier movement? Is it trying to balance two things but not really working out too well for you? Why do you use it? I can't tell you this reason, you have to figure it out for yourself. The next thing you want to find is the biggest downsides of that sense, like why you're here for Mouse Excel. Typically it'd be the opposite of the upside. It's a really high sense, so you're good at tracking people close to you, well then it's probably pretty hard to track people that are far away. It's really low, maybe it's hard to move around, maybe it's hard to move fast at wide angles. So whatever this reason is, you just have to figure it out for yourself, I can't explain it to you. If you can't figure out why you want Mouse Excel in the first place, it's probably not a good thing for you to turn on because it'll just make things harder for you. So once you've decided what your issue is, you want to put yourself in the scenario or situation you're optimizing yourself for. Maybe load into an Apex custom lobby, load into a Valorant custom lobby, load into some custom lobby in a game. Maybe you can get away with using an aim trainer scenario, however you want to get it right for the movement speeds that you're going to be hitting shots on in game, as Excel very dependent on how fast you're moving your mouse, so you usually want to go in game to figure this out. Before I explain what you want to do in this custom lobby, I have to ask you to subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it just, I really appreciate it. Now you want to go back to those questions I had you ask yourself earlier. Was your high sense too high at high speeds? Is your low sense too low at fast speeds? If you're starting with a low sense, you want to make your base sense a bit lower than that sense. This is because you pass your base sense very quickly. If you're starting from a high sense, you want to cap your sense at a point around that sensitivity. If it's like a medium sense you're starting with, you want to just use that as a reference of roughly where your base and cap should be. Maybe start with them like 10 centimeters apart. Now just go have your friend do whatever movements the enemy will be doing in the game and then just aim at your friend. If the game's a low TTK game, you'll be focusing mostly on flicks. If it's a high TTK game, you'll be focusing mostly on tracking. If precise movements feel too slow, raise the base. If long movements feel too fast or out of control, lower the cap. When tracking, you want to look at how long does my sense stay at a place where the speed I'm tracking him at is sufficient to stay on target. For different bot speeds and player speeds, it will feel different, so that's why it's very important to be in game. In tracking based games, you really want to maximize your ability to stay on target as frequently as possible. So just look at how you interact with different targets and adjust your Excel curve to make it as easy as possible to stay on that target. This is a really hard concept to describe with words and it's kind of just something you have to feel in game. I hope this helps you just become an all around better aimer. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more aim training content.